here at the Cabinet Office by Lord Ahmad of Wimbledon, who is the Overseas Territories Minister uh, from the United Kingdom. Uh, this morning we had a conversation on a number of issues, uh, and we are happy to take any particular questions of uh, which you may have. Just as a brief uh, thing, the topics of which were discussed, of course, uh, were the ongoing issue with uh, passports, which has been a challenge uh, for a uh, number of Bermudians, the issues with the uh, European Union and the uh, economic uh, substance, uh, the issues uh, surrounding uh, child safeguarding, which is something that is important with the uh, United Kingdom and which the government of Bermuda is working with the United Kingdom uh, on those particular matters. And then uh, finally, um, there is a matter as well. On your, the sampler issue. Yes, uh, of course. Uh, <laughs> the issue of public registers of beneficial ownership. <laughs> How could I forget? And we, of course, reiterated the position of which the Bermuda government has in that particular matter. So happy to take any questions of which you may have. Yes, I have a question for Lord Mark. Yeah. Uh, good morning, sir. Good morning. As you're well aware, the uh, recommendations from the Foreign Affairs Committee over uh, residency rights and status mm -hmm. for non belongers uh, has alarmed a lot of communities. Mm -hmm. I know the FCO is planning a formal response, but can you say anything to directly address the concerns of communities? Well, first and foremost, I think this is a matter for Bermuda. It's a matter which uh, Bermuda has to look at very carefully and in terms of citizens' rights. What I would say about there has been a lot of publicity and comment around the Foreign Affairs Committee report. First and foremost, the Foreign Affairs Committee is not part of Her Majesty's government. Uh, it's a committee which scrutinizes the foreign affairs work. It also calls for evidence from various matters relating to the overseas territories in this respect. And I, as a minister, are often called in front of it to give response. In terms of matters of citizen rights, it's a matter for the Bermudian government here to take forward. What I would say is we're proud of our relationship with Bermuda. Bermudan citizens enjoy access to the UK in terms of citizenship rights, but I think all these things have to be very carefully looked at, uh, not things that can be affected overnight. So one shouldn't get overly alarmist about these issues. It's a recommendation of a committee, and like with all recommendations of the committee, the UK government looks at those recommendations and will respond accordingly. There will be an official response in due course, but as I said on the issue when it comes to issues of citizenship rights, it's primarily a matter that for the government here to take forward. I mean, we have MPs at Westminster which, who are interfering in the uh, domestic affairs of the territories with the sanctions of anti money laundering act, which is poised to damage our economies if uh, forced through. And then we have uh, the FAC, as we just discussed, which has uh, taken a radical approach over citizenship and residency. And then we have the UK itself, which is consumed by Brexit. Is it fair to say that the relationship between London and the territories has broken down? Well, first and foremost, I don't think we're consumed by Brexit. If I can give you a very practical example, I'm standing as a man, man, member of Her Majesty's government in an overseas territory and proud to be visiting Bermuda for the first time. Has the relationship broken down? On the contrary, not. I would defy you to ask any, including uh, my good friend Premier Burt, but any leader of any territory which the UK is proud to have part of the British family, to say that the relationship is not working. There are points of difference, and it's important that we have a discussion on those points of difference and agree a way forward. If we have contrarian opinions, we respect those contrarian opinions, and that continues to be the case. We have a very vibrant, open, but productive and progressive relationship with all our overseas territories. On the matter of Westminster, talking about our British overseas territories, I think it's part of the mandate of the British Parliament. You know, the UK overseas territories are part of what defines Britain on the international stage. However, we also respect the constitutional positions that are in place with each overseas territories, and those positions have to be respected. You mentioned a couple of points. First of all, on the sanctions and money laundering bill, the now act, I should say. Um, my own position on that was very clear. The amendment which was first which went through the House of Lords and was defeated, was something that I was very vociferous in the defence of to ensure that the issue of public registers were not imposed on any overseas territory. And it was unfortunate that when it went to the House of Commons, the government's position was not accepted by the majority of members of parliament. 
we have to respect that decision and therefore what the amendment which was passed required the British government to issue an order in council which we have subsequently announced that we will do so by 2023 on those territories who don't have registers. We're also cognizant of the constitutional position of Bermuda and as I said to Premier Burt this morning uh, during our discussions and to others that that's a position that we respect and we don't want to get into conflict or, or debate and uh, vigorous debate about constitutional issues alone with our overseas territories. But I do believe we have to work through working technical groups to ensure that when we get to that point of public registers, they are public registers that work in the interests of the territory and they're public registers that work in the, indus in the in, uh, interests of the industry. Indeed, that was a message I conveyed to my, uh, the business community here this morning during my meeting with them. What will happen hereafter in terms of the UK Parliament? There are some suggestions to bring forth earlier dates. The United Kingdom resists that. We wish to work very productively with our overseas territories in the introduction of public registers. And the 2023 date should be no surprise to anyone. It was something articulated first by then Prime Minister David Cameron, that that we believe to be the date which is set through international standards to, for all jurisdictions around the world to comply with. And I assure you, we make and use every opportunity, be it through the European Union or indeed our membership of the G7, the G20, to ensure that point is not forgotten by other partners on the international stage. Morning. 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 Yes, we did discuss that. I think the United Kingdom's position on that is very clear. We have legislated for that within the UK. Um, in terms of the ma uh, matter here in Bermuda, I know that is something which is going through due, due legal process, and I think that has to be respected. Uh, wherever you are in the world, you have to respect the legal processes which are underway. The United Kingdom's position on this issue is very clear, and we will continue to stress that in all our bilateral discussions, as I did this morning with uh, Premier Burt as well. So you said in response to a question from my colleague that um, voting rights here was, was a matter for Bermuda. Do you see the same-sex marriage issue as also a matter for Bermuda? Well, you've seen our actions to date. I think that should reflect about what our view is on that. We believe, from a UK perspective, we've made uh, arrangements in UK law for those relationships to be recognised and that legislation has gone through. But this is going through due process here in Bermuda, and I think that due process has to be respected. Appreciate that. Any other questions? I need to bring it along more often, because I don't well, have questions from me. Well, I don't know about that. No, I just say the other thing I would say finally is in closing this is my first visit to Bermuda. I have had the good fortune to literally see sunrise this morning. Uh, I was privileged, honoured, and indeed humbled to be present at the ANZAC commemoration this morning. And I think that is a good point to start a day on, you know, a period of reflection, a recognition of people who give their lives in face of adversity for others. And right here in Bermuda, there are many Bermudians who did just that. And we stand with Bermuda through some of its challenges it faces. I certainly enjoy a very productive, constructive relationship with uh, Premier Burt. We often interrupt our conversations about uh, sharing different experiences we have with our young children. It's amazing whether you're in Bermuda or London, often the children's stories are pretty much the same. Um, I was educated this morning about cricket. Um, I'll leave that where it is. All I'll say is my private secretary was right and I was wrong. There you go, Minister, admitting that fully in front of the press. But the other thing I would say is that the relationship that the United Kingdom enjoys with Bermuda, indeed all the British overseas territories, is part of what defines modern Britain today. It is valued, it's one we respect, and one which is steeped in history. But I also believe there is a real positive future and progress to be made in developing that relationship. And we look forward to working. You mentioned, sir, about Brexit. Yes, it is an important issue, but I f firmly believe that we have to think beyond Brexit and our relationship about Brexit is inclusive in terms of our representations we make for the OTs in our discussions with the European Union, but our relationships go much deeper than that. And when I go out, to use a cricket analogy, and bat for Britain, 
I talk with pride about being the Minister for the Overseas Territories. Thank you. You may. Well, you're, I thought I'd come to my conclusion. I have to make some <laughs> more. I'll have to carry on talking now. Then. What's your impression of Bermuda before you got here? And what would you take now being here for the first time when you leave? Well, first and foremost, you know, I'd seen it through pictures. I'd seen it through words of the Premier and the Governor. And all I'll say is those words, those pictures came real. And this morning, uh, when I saw the sun rise, I was taken back as I walked around and heard. I haven't yet seen that much of the natural habitats that defines Bermuda. I was taken back by the fact and the warmth of the reception, whilst I've only met a few groups of people. And there have been some issues where there have been talks of difference and different perspectives and different positions we take. It's done in a very respectful and warm way. And I think the defining thing I'm taking back from my visit here is not just the hot weather, because we had hot sun in London when I left, is also the warmth of the hospitality I've received. And to quote someone quite famous from Hollywood, I hope I shall be back. Thank you.